This video uh, is a demonstration on how to work a thumb gusset and this can be used for mittens, gloves, or fingerless mitts. In this case we're making a fingerless mitt. So we've knitted the cuff portion of our fingerless mitt. This is three inches here, an inch of ribbing and two inches of stockinette. And we've worked around placing a marker three stitches in from the uh, right edge here. So this is where we're going to place our thumb gusset. This will be the base right here. And then it will grow up. This is the reason for the thumb gusset. You have your hand and then your hand enlarges in this area here to accommodate the thumb. So the thumb gusset will be right here. So we're going to go ahead and get this started. I have my stitches. My work is on two 24 inch circular needles. You can use magic loop or DPNs. It doesn't really matter. The techniques are exactly the same. So I'm going to enlarge this to two times so we can get a close up of what's going on here. We've got our three stitches here. And the reason we start with three stitches is because we're going to be making increases on either side of the thumb gusset to accommodate the increase the amount of fabric that we have. So we're going to make an increase between these two stitches and between these two stitches. We're going to be using make ones. You can use whichever increases you would like, but I'm going to demonstrate this using make ones. They're my favorites for this purpose. So we're going to knit the first stitch. And then we're going to make our first make one. And this is going to be a make one left. We want it to lean away from the edge of the fabric. So we're going to take our left needle and go underneath that bar from front to back and then we're going to knit this through the back. And what happens is we create a make one and you can see that the top cross of that twisted stitch is pointing to the left. It's a left make one. Then we're going to knit a stitch and then one stitch before the marker right here we're going to do a make one right and we go from behind to the front and then knit this through the front. So we've just increased two stitches and we're going to knit this stitch. Now our thumb gusset is five stitches wide. It's right there. Then we're going to work two rounds in stockinette and I'm going to do that right now and then I'll join you back here in just a second and we'll do those increases one more time. Okay, so now I have worked that one increase round plus two rounds of just plain stockinette and we're going to look at this. We can go down this column. This is the stitch column that we just created last time and there is that make one left and you can see that the top leg is slanting to the left. And then we go over here to the first column in from that edge stitch, from the thumb gusset edge stitch, come down here, and we can see the other make one right here, and you can see that the top stitch, the top part of that leg is pointing to the right. That's a right make one. So at this point, we're going to repeat it. We're going to make a make one here after the first stitch of the round and before the last stitch before the marker. So we're going to make one here and one here, and then we'll do two plain rounds of knitting. And then we'll repeat those three rounds until our thumb gusset is the desired number of stitches in length. So we're going to make those increases again now. Uh, you may notice that I'm a continental knitter, but these are work the same whether you're a thrower or a continental knitter. If you just watch the needle tips versus where the yarn's coming from, you'll be just fine. So we knit the first stitch. Then we're going to make a make one left. We take the left needle and we dip down and pick that bar up from front to back. And then we knit it through the back loop. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to get that back there, but you can get it. That's a make one left. You can see it points to the left. Then we're going to work until one stitch remains before the marker right here. We're going to make a make one right. So we dip down with the left needle and pick that up from the back to the front and we knit it through the front. And then we're going to knit to the end of the round. 
and then two plain rounds. And we're gonna repeat this process until our thumb gusset has the necessary number of stitches and rows uh, to complete our fingerless mitt. So I'll be back in a few minutes after I finish those increase rounds. At this point, I have worked um, several more increase rounds. I now have 17 stitches on this portion of the needle instead of the three that I started with. And we can take a close look at this and really look at how this gusset is formed. Here is our stitch marker, and you can see that one stitch that's right inside of it, which was we worked the increases right before that. So that column of stitches comes up nice right there from the three we started with. The first one of the three goes up here and makes this nice column. Then all of our increases, our left-leaning increases are in here, and our right-leaning increases are in here. I'll point them out to you. Here's a, a right-leaning increase, right-leaning increase, right-leaning increase. Can you see them? Over here on this side, we have our left. Here's one, here's one, here's one. Another way to identify them is you can just pick any column of stitches and come down that column to where it stops right there, and that's where the left leaning increase is. Let's pick this column. We come down this column, and it stops right there. There's that left leaning increase. Same over here on the right side. So let's try this on and see how it fits. See if our thumb gusset is long enough for us. So I'm gonna just slip my hand through here. And I want the base of that thumb gusset to come right to the base of my thumb right here where the bone ends. You can feel it right there. That's where I want the base of that thumb gusset to come. And then we're going to stretch the gusset around the base of the thumb and see if it's going to fit. It's pretty close. In fact, I think that looks like a fit because we're going to cast on a couple of extra stitches right here to replace those three we started with. And that looks really good. So for me, 17 stitches is going to work good. Depending on you and your stitch gauge, you're going to have to try it on just like I am and see if it's long enough and if the stitches will stretch around the base of the thumb. From here to here, the stitch marker. And those look really good. Okay, that's a fit. So next is how do we finish off this thumb gusset? So for this portion, this is where we're going to take these thumb gusset stitches off of this needle and we're gonna put them onto waist yarn. Now, when we're making a fingerless mitt, glove or mitten, and you change uh, the fabric from the thumb gusset to the main hand portion, we're gonna be casting on some extra stitches here for the hand. And invariably, when you come back and finish that thumb, you end up with a hole right here where these stitches and these stitches change. These become thumb, these become hand. And the same over here, after this stitch marker, you're gonna end up with a hole over here. So I have a little trick to uh, try to uh, increase the odds of not having a hole. And the way that I do that is that strand that is going from this stitch on this needle over to this stitch here, we can see this strand this strand right here. I'm going to put it on the tapestry needle like this, as if it were a stitch, or it kind of looks like a yarn over, but it goes on the tapestry needle like that. So the, the waist yarn is going to go under that bar, and then I'm going to slip all of these stitches that are the thumb gusset over onto my tapestry needle and the waist yarn. When I get to the other end, I'm going to lift that bar at the other end and also take the waist yarn under that bar. Then once we finish the hand portion and come back to this thumb, I'll show you what I do with that to help close those holes. So we're gonna take the stitch marker off. 
and we're going to go under this bar. We want it to be like this, like it's a stitch. And we're going to just pull the waist yarn through those stitches. So now we have our thumb gusset off the needle. And if we lay our hand out like this, you can see where the thumb's going to be. Isn't that beautiful? We can turn it over and look at the other side. There you go. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the hand and then I'll be back here once I do that and I'll show you how to finish off the now thumb. Now that we have the thumb gusset done, we have to turn our attention to the hand. And the first thing we're going to do is cast on those three stitches that we removed into the thumb gusset when we started that process. So here we're going to cast on three stitches using the backward loop cast on. I'm gonna cast on one, two, three. Then I'm going to join back in the round and we're going to continue working the hand in the round with the thumb gussets on the waist yarn and I'm going to work the hand portion to the desired length and add my ribbing and bind it off and then I'll be back here to finish this thumb in just a few minutes. We have finished our hand, uh, finished the ribbing with the tubular bind off here and everything fits really nicely. We're really happy with how that thumb gusset comes up around the thumb. It's going to be just perfect. So now we're going to finish off with that thumb. And we had previously put those stitches onto waist yarn plus that loop we're going to magnify this the loop before the stitches and the loop afterwards. So we're going to pick these up and put them on our circular needle and we're going to be putting most of these on this needle and some of them on the second needle. We'll rearrange the stitches once we get them all picked up. So we're just sliding these onto the knitting needle. I'm going to put about half of these on here, pull this needle through, and we'll get the second needle and we'll pick up these over here. Plus that loop at the end. And here's the loop. And then we're just going to slip that waist yarn out. Now we have those stitches that were being held on waist yarn back on two needles. And we're ready to deal with this area right here where we picked up stitches for the hand. So where are we going to pick up stitches? We cast on three. And you can see those three. Let's get that yarn out of the way. They were right here, here, and here. We cast on one, two, three stitches across that gap. When we look at it this way, we can see, yes, there's three columns of stitches. When we look at it this way, we really have a half a column going over to this side, a full column here, a full column here, and a half column going over here. So we're going to be picking up four stitches across this area. We're going to pick up in these two columns and we're going to pick up in this column and we're going to pick up in this column. So we're going to pick up one, two, three, four stitches across here. And we also have, remember, those loops on the needle already from these areas here. So between picking up those loops and picking up the extra stitch on either side here, we're going to help close that gap on either side. So here we are, in, and this needle over here. So we've got that needle in our hand and the working yarn. And we're going to start by picking up stitches across that gap. We've got our two columns there. We're going to pick up the first one here. One, two, 
one here. We're picking up in the right side up V's. And the fourth one right here. So we've picked up four stitches. Now we'll go to the other end of this same needle. And we've got that loop to deal with that we picked up from that bar. So we want to twist that. I'm just going to pull it around this way and twist it. Doesn't matter which way you twist it, but we want it twisted. See how that pulls that hole more closed? And then we're going to knit it together with its neighbor as I knit two together. And then we're going to pull that up really tight. We want this to be a very narrow gap between those two areas. Then we're going to knit to the end of the needle. And switch to the other needle. And we're going to knit until two loops remain on this needle, which is one is a picked up stitch from the waist yarn, and the other one is that bar that we had picked up with the tapestry needle. Here we come. And we're just going to slip this stitch over here for right now. We want to twist this one also. I'm just twisting it. Put this, and we want to reverse this stitch mount and work this as an SSK. And then we're going to switch to the other needle. Now we, we're still going to have this gap right here because our working yarn started right here and it's not bridging that gap. But when we close this, we'll be able to use this tail weave when we weave that in to really make sure that this gap is closed. So this is where that gap is and we're now moving over to this needle, we'll be able to use the tail, but let's try to make this as tight as we can across here, pulling that tight between the needles and knitting across this needle. There is the potential hole right here. We want to make sure those stitches are nice and tight across that area. Now the thumb isn't very long, so you don't need to work very many rounds of stockinette stitch before you're going to start your ribbing. Let's look at this area. We can tighten this. Remember we have the tail here, and that's going to help us tighten that. I'm going to switch to the other needle. I'm going to knit to the end. And then I'm going to knit two more rounds and we'll come back and take a look at this and see how those holes look and how the length of the thumb looks. Okay, so I've worked a couple more rounds and you can see the length of the thumb is good. It's, this is about where I would want to start the ribbing because I don't want my thumb to be much longer than this where you bend it. That's a convenient place. So I would start my ribbing now. Here on the inside, this is where that potential hole is, and that's pretty darn good, closing it up. That is an excellent hole close right there. And you can see it doesn't interfere with the um, stitch element. Over here on this side, which is where we started by picking up the stitches, it's expected that that hole will be a little bit bigger because we have the looseness of this tail and it has not been woven in. But when we tighten up this tail and weave it in, it will close that gap as well. So at this point I would start my knit one purl one ribbing and then do my bind off and then my fingerless mitt will be done. Okay so now the fingerless mitt is finished and this is our finished work with the thumb gusset. I've woven in all the ends except for this one which was where we picked up the stitches to cross the divide between the thumb and the hand. On the other side you can see that hole is nicely closed. 
but this one's still open. So let's see how we can fix that by weaving in the end. Here's the area of concern. You can see the hole on the other side is nicely compensated, but we still have this hole. And so what I do with this tail, so I get my tapestry needle and thread the working yarn onto it. I use this same technique for closing the holes, bridging the gap when you're doing a raglan sleeve on a sweater. You know how you always have those holes where the raglan joins? This works for, for that too. So we've got the hole, we've got our working yarn. We can go around and catch, let me increase this so you can see it. We're gonna go through and catch the working yarn, the tail, right under here and under here. Just going under those loops. And we'll finish off by going over this loop with the started with. And we're just going to pull on it. And it closes the hole just like that and it's invisible and then we're just going to weave this end in I'll show you how I weave in ends here too I just use a, a method of duplicate stitch on the wrong side of the work and it's invisible on the right side and we just need to do it for a couple of stitches And there you have it. We'll trim that end. Our hole is closed. We'll trim the end. I leave about a quarter of an inch. And then let's turn it back to the outside and see what it looks like. And that's where the hole used to be. It's now closed. So we'll try this on. Here's a perfect, perfect thumb gusset. Fits all, comes all the way down to here at the base of my thumb. Fits across here, fits the thumb. Be sure to check out my tutorial. I have a pattern tutorial on Ravelry that you can purchase on creating this whole uh, fingerless mitt, including the tubular bind off, the tubular cast on, and this thumb gusset, and how to calculate um, and create a mitt that fits your hand using your yarn and your stitch gauge. Happy knitting!